Hey guys! Hello! So this week, uh, well this weekend, we uh, went out and picked up the newest addition to the Toymaker Studio. This is the amazingly rare, like people who are looking for these can spend decades and not even see one in person or talk to anybody who actually owns one rare. These are extremely rare. This is a Wurlitzer 270 Butterfly Baby Grand. And this is the electric piano that we've always envisioned that would sit in this room someday. So when one came up, uh, we went and picked it up. And you can see up behind it is the 206A that we've opened up before. That's back here. And uh, they're very similar. Um, they work the same way, but uh, this one has vibrato uh, and uh, generally a much nicer sound overall. Does and this one have the same guts as the 200A? This one has the same guts as the 200. Oh, okay. So very, very, very similar. Okay. Um, and the amplifier in this one is actually a higher wattage than the 200 as well. And uh, this one has two speakers in it that are nice big speakers, whereas the 200 and 200A have small little tiny speakers in it. Field coil? Uh, no, not field coil. This is newer technology. By newer, I mean 1977 to 1980. Um, so Wurlitzer made these pianos as a very high top of the line home version of their electric pianos. Uh, but around 1980, all of those electronics from Japan started flooding into the United States. So the market for this sort of thing just disappeared overnight. Mm -hmm. Wurlitzer stopped making them uh, after having not made very many. Now, even though this is like the pinnacle end point of that evolutionary process, uh, because of cheap electronics, it became, you know, a dead end oh. uh, evolutionarily. And uh, so this is like the the pinnacle creature of a whole um, evolutionary line. And there she is. I mean, uh, and uh, it's working beautifully. And uh, we'll show you exactly uh, what you need to know to be able to pick one of these up because we had to learn a few things. So mm -hmm. let's sneak underneath and take a look. Okay. Welcome to Under My Piano. How y'all doing? <laughs> Come here often. Ever, everyone okay? <laughs> So the front of the piano, the key side, is that way. And uh, down here we can see the speakers. Right there. So obviously the speakers are open on the front and the back. So sort of a dipole configuration. And uh, we needed to be able to fit this in the car. And looking at it, you wouldn't think it would fit, but it does indeed fit nicely. So this is the sustain um, pedestal. And by loosening this, this support bar comes off. And by taking these three out, the rest of this will all come apart. And um, this is like the actual sustain linkage thing here. As I push down the pedal, it pulls here. All right, so what we did is took these two screws out and then this rod can just come out and uh, these three and then the rest of this comes off and loosen that and then the linkage comes apart and then that whole center, center pedestal is gone. Now for the legs, they each have what, two screws? Mm -hmm. And there's three legs. So that's really simple. Just take out the screws on the three legs. Let's shoot back up to the top and take a look at, at the uh, music stand. So that takes care of, what, 70% of the height by taking the legs off. And the rest of it is all accounted up here. And this actually comes off really easily with two screws, one and two, and then just comes right off. Uh, do be careful if you're gonna remove these because as you take them out, you don't wanna let this slide and scratch the finish. So it comes off very easily, but be careful. And once you get that off and the uh, wings closed, the overall height of this is actually only about 10 inches uh, by 46, Two? I think it was. 
something like that. By 34 or ish yeah. around there. About three, three by four feet is the max that you'll have to account for. So this actually does fit in the trunk of a car if you can fold the back seats down. Yep. Uh, but Compact use, car. Use moving blankets because this finish is... Nice. Yeah. All right, now uh, we just got this back and it is working correctly, uh, but there's a problem I want to fix right away. So we're gonna show you guys what that is. Okay, so the controls on this are as simple as could be. Piano keyboard, power switch, volume, and what my other one was missing, vibrato. So. That's the money maker right there, the vibrato. Isn't that nice? Okay. So, um, the problem I wanted to demonstrate is right here. Now when it's on, you can't really hear the problem, but if I turn it off and I hit, say, this key, not very loud, but if I hit this one, you hear that higher harmonic buzzing? So we want to fix that, and there was a couple of them in here. Yeah, there's a lower frequency, but still upper harmonic in that. So that one and that one should be more like that. So we're going to show you how to get to the mechanism that we can actually fix that. So one of the things with an instrument that's this rare is that there's really not any documentation out there on where anything is or how anything works. Uh, but I'm clever so you know I took a, a little look around and I saw that underneath this piece here that there looked like there was some L clips underneath this edge of it. And I did see that there were four screws along the back edge here. So one, two, and then two underneath the other. So I kind of, just by looking at it, realized that these screws go into a block on the bottom of this and then the whole thing can slide far enough so that the L clips are no longer engaged and then come up. So I've already taken the screws out and I can now slide this piece forward. You get the little all clips. Mm -hmm. So that's up and loose. All right, now on this one, I need to get underneath the shield, but the screws are on this face of it. So on this, if you take a look back here, you can see that the fall board has these little hooks that go over these screws. You can actually get a screwdriver in this way, loosen those screws, there's four of them in total, lift the hooks, and then the fall board will come right up. Now on the front here, pretty simple, you've got screws, screws, and one here. Once you get all of those loosened, you can bring it up. But there's these little metal clips above it. So once you get it up enough, bring it out and then you can lift it up. And then we're clear. And that's actually aluminum. Like it's not just sheet metal, it's like thick, which is much better than the other um, Wurlitzers that I've seen open. Much higher quality on this guy. All right, so as you can see, this is a tine-based organ or piano, and there's an actual like wooden full piano action inside of here. So when I press this down, it knocks a piece up that comes up underneath this tine hits it and this damper comes down when you let go and it deadens the sound 
and this little metal tine here vibrates inside of this, which is the pickup. Now on each side of that tine, there's only a very small amount of space to each side of it. So here's one tool we're going to want, a feeler gauge. And this, I happen to have uh, 11 thousands out on it. And I can see that that'll slide in just barely on that side. But really doesn't want to fit on that side. So I know that this tine is a little off center in this direction. And the only thing holding this tine in place is this screw right here. So what you do is you prop up your damper and take your nut driver and get your guitar tuner or chromatic tuner I guess would be a better way of saying it now we know that it's a little bit sharp at the moment but I'm not so much trying to tune at this exact moment is see if I can take that buzz out. And it's really close anyway. And I'm glad that there's only a couple of these that I have to do because it's not the most fun job in the world, that's for sure. Take a quick look at this reed and see what's going on under the hood here. Hemostats are very useful for this too, I've found. You can definitely see the filing marks from somebody tuning it. You never quite know what you're gonna run into on these. Does it feel junky? No, no, it's it's in pretty good shape. This is definitely an original that's been worked on. This isn't a replacement. Mm -hmm. Were these instruments meant to be DIY repair? You'd bring them to the dealer, oh. or they'd send out an on-site technician. And there was whole industries of guys whose jobs it was to come out and fix your television, your radio. You know, this is in the days before everybody started just throwing away their electronics when something went wrong. And these things are built to last and to be serviced. Now unfortunately, you know, you can't get these serviced now. You have to become your own service technician. Mm -hmm. But it's not that hard. You know. It wasn't a guy that rocket scientists, it wasn't a job that rocket scientists had. It was a job that regular everyday folks had. Okay, I'm going to clear back the stuff off the keyboard. is you get dirt and grime and if it connects the pickup metal to the tine if there's any like uh, 
semiconductors of any sort, oxide, aluminum oxide, anything, dust, dirt, grime, in there, it'll cause the amplifier to pick that up as like a strong signal. But you saw by hitting the key that I was working on, it stopped because it knocked whatever was out. frequency now. That's in closer tune now anyway. Okay, let's change the shape on the sucker. So Whisker put some solder on and is now filing it to try to get it to 
be a bit more narrow so that it can fit between the, the two sides of the what, pickup. Yeah, in that slot. Now be careful when you're doing this because of course it's mostly lead. Yeah, you gotta wash your hands. And not breathe in the yeah. dust. Try not to make really fine dust. If you use a file, it comes off in nice big pieces that don't float around in the air or anything. That makes it somewhat manageable. Wearing gloves is probably a good idea too. Do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. And this is a bit of a trial and error uh, thing that we're doing at the moment just because we've put it on back into place a couple times and we got rid of the buzzing but um, it still wasn't tuned correctly and needed a little bit more solder so this is I think the third try yeah just adding some more to lower the tone see how much it changed from the last time this one I'm, I'm not gonna go too crazy on getting it uh, super clean I just want to make sure it's thin enough to fit and then we'll see if I need to add more solder or remove solder and then I'll surface it so that there's no weirdness going on because you can see there's some lines of where I added still on there. Alright Addy, why don't you throw this one in and see where we're at tuning wise. Okay. How do you say pain in the butt in Spanish? Dolor in el culo. I think that sounds like a little bit too literal of a translation. Oh, you did ask. Is that hitting? At this point, it's hitting. I think it's still a little too wide. Yeah, I'll take some more off. Perfect. Yeah, it's no longer buzzing, and we managed to get it into closer tuning than it was before. By adding lead and filing off lead and adding more and filing off. Yeah, it took a little bit of extra love in that, but... Nice. Alright, I think uh, we're to the point where we can put her back together and see how it's playing. Okay. So here are the three we fixed. No buzzing. Excellent. Nice.
Huh. We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe. And follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.